So I think most of you know that I'm a teacher. Well, it's Labor Day weekend, and honestly, this is not so good of a time of year for most teachers because the year is just starting. In fact, I think all teachers have a mini crisis of uh, identity um, every August. Uh, my household is full of educators. We all follow that summer schedule. And I know that we have this rule that says no major life decisions can be made in August or September or October. Something about no big decisions during desol desolation, right? And truthfully, this has probably saved me a couple of times in my life because some Augusts are just a little bit harder than others and I feel compelled to maybe make some changes. Just the other day, I was saying to my wife, I think it's time that I retire. And she was like, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Until I explained to her, no, it's time that I retire. In order for this to work, you're gonna have to work a, a few more, well, maybe about 17 more years. It didn't go over so well, so I thought, I'm not gonna say anything about her working extra weekends now. In all seriousness, there's times when we experience an identity crisis in our lives. Sometimes they're bigger than others. When we don't have things go the way that we expect, I think the apostles could say the same about their lives. For them, it's been quite a journey thus far, and it isn't getting any easier for them. This is a major turning point in Christ's ministry. See, the disciples have now acknowledged his divinity. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And they have their own expectations about what that means. They've witnessed miracles and signs that point to God. But those signs are not pointing where they thought they should be pointing. Jesus is not the Messiah that they were expecting. Even though he is the Son of God and God himself, he says that he must die at the hands of those who oppose him, the religious leaders of that time. And not only that, but he's telling the apostles that they have to be ready to do the same. It's no wonder that Peter jumps in to correct Jesus and gets in trouble again. Jesus goes from calling Peter the rock on which he's going to build his church to the stumbling block, rock to stumbling block in about 10 seconds. You see, the problem with Peter is that, well, he's a human being and he's focusing on things of the human world and not on things of God. Basically, his reaction is based in human fear, fear of losing his life and fear of losing control of his life, which we all fear, right? Like our own physical death, I think that one of the things that bothers us most is having to give up control of our lives, dying to ourselves the way that Christ is telling us that we need to. In other words, Peter was having an identity crisis. Like Peter, we think we have a pretty good idea of what following Jesus should look like, but often our idea is grounded in the things of this world and not of God's kingdom. We don't see the bigger picture of God's grace extended to all people. And here's the big problem. Based on our limited view, we don't always see how our decisions and how our words impact others. We can't see the hurt we cause. We can't see the doors we close or the opportunities that we lose. We can't see how not bearing our cross makes other crosses harder to bear. But bearing our cross is what Jesus is asking us to do. And not just those little inconveniences that we jokingly call our cross to bear. Think about this. Christ is calling us to a complete sacrifice of our very selves, a full surrender, whatever may come, as a result of claiming him as our Savior. That's hard for me. I struggle. See, I think I know everything and how to handle every situation. Often I have an agenda behind my thinking and actions, and it's not that my agenda is bad, it's that my agenda is not God. You see, here's the thing. There's this cultural pressure that we put on ourselves to succeed, to climb the ladder and move up in the world. But as appealing as that sounds, that doesn't really satisfy our hunger for meaning. Deep down, we know that we are not enough. We feel inadequate and restless no matter what our accomplishments may be. Why? Because we are not created for this world. Our hearts are restless until they rest in you, Lord. And yet, even knowing that, we are pretty poor at cross-bearing and even worse at denying ourselves. 
Therein lies the problem and the challenge. But the paradox is this, that in full surrender, we find complete freedom. By giving ourselves wholly to Christ, we are set free to be holy people that God created us to be. If we follow Jesus, we will be called to bear a cross and to lose hold of our life. Yet, in our weakness and in our human-mindedness, if we draw close to him, it is he that enables us to do that which we cannot do on our own. It's his burden that we take up on our shoulders. It's his strength that bears the weight. We do nothing on our own, but he can do much with us and through us. Without him, Peter is a stumbling block. With him, Peter is the rock on which he builds his church. Without him, we are powerless and struggle, pushing our own agenda. With him, his power. And with his power, we are able to deny ourselves and to bear that cross that he wants us to bear. So, what does bearing a cross look like in our lives? To be sure, We've got those smaller crosses that we talk about, we bear every day. We're called to endure quietly and patiently the minor sufferings that come our way. Offer it up, as they say, right? Rather than complaining. But when Jesus talks about bearing a cross, he's modeled for us how that is. And it's something far deeper than just bearing someone's pain, okay? Over and over, his message to us is to die to ourselves and focus on the welfare of those around us. I did not come to be served, but to serve. Anyone who wants to be first must be last. Give to the one who begs from you, and do not refuse one who would borrow from you. I was hungry, and you gave me food. Whoever has two tunics should share with him who has none. Whoever has food is to do likewise. It is more blessed to give than receive. Whoever finds his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Love one another as I have loved you. Do you see this pattern here? There's a pattern that develops and it's pretty obvious. We are called to love as Jesus loves. What does that look in our life? How do we take up a cross? Well, there's many opportunities to do good and to help other people when they are in need. And a good place to start is the works of mercy. There are spiritual and corporal works of mercy, and all present good opportunities for direction in our lives of how we can carry the cross that Christ wants us to carry. I'm not going to list them. You all probably know most of them, or you can look them up. Just know that the corporal works, taking care of physical needs of others with food and shelter and clothing, and the spiritual works, tending to people's minds and hearts and souls by patiently comforting them and counseling them and praying for them, they're equally important and equally valuable when we follow Christ's command to serve and to love others as he loved us. Love one another as I have loved you. Think about what that means. There's no greater or more perfect love than the, Christ, than the love that Christ has given to us, that beautiful sacrificial love. Christ gave us by coming into the world as one of us, serving us, dying for us, and opening for us the gates of heaven. And when he says to love one another, he sets the bar pretty high, and that's exactly what he's asking all of us to do. The apostles didn't seem to be ready for what Jesus was telling them, how he would have to die and how they would have to give up their lives in service to him and to his people. Fortunately, they did manage to figure it out. Peter is the rock on which the church was built. He and the other apostles carried the good news of Christ to the corners of the world. And through them, Christ founded the church, which we are all still part of today. And now we know them as St. Peter, St. John, and so on, because we know that they live in heaven with God, in the kingdom of heaven, with Christ, whom they served so well. So it seems to me next time I'm having an identity crisis, I need to know, look no further than the risen Christ and the words that God tells us through the prophet Jeremiah. For I know well the plans I have in mind for you, plans for your welfare and not for woe, so as to give you a future of hope. Folks, it's Labor Day. Let's celebrate the work that we do 
get some well-deserved rest, and then go out into the world and do the work that Christ is asking us to do. Yeah.